Monte Cristo, an interesting statistic. Riven is 5-0 and oh for the season. I did not expect that in this Cinder Hulk manner, <laughs> but as Cinder Hulk starts to get nerfed, as we see, as you mentioned, casters in the top lane, tanks in the top lane, now even just straight damaged carries like Riven. 5-0 and oh Riven on the season. And for those of you keeping track at home, that's 1-0 and oh for Samsung, 1-0 and oh for KT with Someday playing it. And then we had 3-0 and oh for Smeb, the uh, Koo Tigers once again, bringing in some new picks to the scene. They are very innovative this year, the Koo Tigers. They found a lot of stuff that works for them. Sivir, the usual ban against Fury, is going to reappear in this game. And there is the Rise ban from Apple. I guess he... Not wanting to play that this game, although Kuve was playing Sivir or playing Rise before 5.10, so he was actually drawing Rise bands at 5.9. It's just a specialty champion of his, and now that it is as powerful as it is right now, you really don't want to give that one over. So, if you're Sam, if you're LZIM right now, you're feeling shell shocked, Monte Cristo. You did not expect to lose the first game, certainly in the 28-minute fashion that you did. Do you need to add, but we know the answer they haven't, but are there any adaptation bans that you think should have come through? I don't think the Riven needs a ban. It feels like teams have just been smart about picking that into the right situation. Is it just opting into champions like Victor with champions like Twisted Fate available, or does TF actually need a ban? I don't think TF needs a ban here because it's just, Samsung's good with it, uh, but there are options. Now, of course, with Samsung on the red side, uh, picking that TF, is going to be easier. But that said, it's not like Apple played particularly poorly against the TF either. He backed off when he needed to. There are going to be some inevitable kills, but IM did trade that first dragon for a death on the Apple, which is totally worth it. So I think it's just much more about caution from the other lanes, and maybe they think they can deal with it. Now, the other problem here is what happens if Samsung takes that Rek'Sai right now, that champion that they have been so good at flexing, and it's such a powerful pick for them on red side. If they pick this Corky early again, they'll pop up. I'm just going to really be confused. Yeah, the Corky, oh, I agree with, and they lock it in, but the Maokai still opens up the Nidalee. I did mention during the pregame for game one that great synergy between Nidalee and Maokai when it comes to ganking for your top lane. I am actually thinking about taking away the Twisted Fate, or they're just hovering in this particular situation. One of the reasons why I talk about the TF, Frozen was 4-0-1 on the Victor, by far the best score, a decent scoreline in any game. It's just, he was almost a non-factor, much like when GBM was playing Xerath and had a decent score in a losing game. Also, Papa, he was 0-0-0 up until the final Nexus push when he got two double kills, and Apple picked up a kill on Rumble where he had the assist, and then the Super Minions killed the Nexus. So the, the final ace was the only thing he did that entire game. He cleared some waves. That is true. He got some fantasy points. <laughs> well, I mean, still, though, just not very impactful. I mean, Samsung's snowball was so brutal that there really wasn't much he could do. He just can't make, I mean, Victor's not a champion that can keep TF a cannibal. You need jungle help to be able to get any sort of assassination potential on the TF. So it just ended up being wave clear wars with, of course, the global ultimate meaning that TF was that much more relevant. Now on the red side, that's the reason why I brought up the TF ban is that on the red side, they're going to probably lock in this Nidalee, have that Nidalee Maokai we talked about. They're going to leave the pick open, and I guess you have to blind pick a champion that can deal with Twisted Fate, because the threat is still there with this comp. Yeah, it is definitely there. Uh, and it's hard, because Twisted Fate is one of those red side or counter picks that is so powerful, because, of course, his ult is amazing. And yes, he does have counters, but you can't really just pick a Fizz right now and expect to do well. So his counter picks are not really first pickable in their own right. So he is tough to deal with, especially if you're going to be drafting a, on blue side against the TF playing team. And they've banned LeBlanc, which of course will be one of the safer champions that can both deal with him in lane and be very relevant in this meta. They were forced to ban LeBlanc on blue. Now that's not an option to pick. Will Frozen just default to a champion like Cassiopeia who can get on top of Twisted Fate in lane, but certainly isn't necessarily a hard counter to him as a champion. I would be really worried about picking Vladimir here. Yes, Apple can play it in the top side, but mid Vladimir just doesn't have the wave clear early in the game to deal with TF's first couple of ports. Could still be a top lane Vladimir yep. there. They haven't locked in the top lane. Did, is this the matchup that we did see him run Vladimir? And I believe it might have been Vladimir Maokai. It's the sort of lane you can run over. He's going to confidently lock in Victor once again and invite the TF. Not sure about this. 
really didn't work out last game. Uh, we, Samsung demonstrated that they are very good at using the Nidalee and the TF together to quickly focus down kills and get those picks. Vladimir is going to be the decision, but that's another top laner that has a lot of danger when it comes to overextending and many ways to kill with a Maokai and a an Nidalee and a possible and I would say likely TF coming in. I guess the only thing you could say is that if they invite this Twisted Fate, they must understand that the only way they can win is to get Vladimir stronger than Maokai. If Maokai can outpush in much the same way that Riven was able to outpush the Rumble, it feels like I am just going to fall into the familiar trap that they did last game. So I expect both teams to put a lot of pressure around top. This is a matchup we've seen happen already. It was actually against Samsung that Crown felt the wrath of Goong's uh, Zed. And of course, also, most recently, Mickey Zed. It's not quite Twisted Fate, but it's split push pressure still going to be put out by the Zed. Now, Crown on Zed is not something that we've seen. Uh, he has shown a very wide champion pool, and Zed will be the lock-in, so we'll see something new from Crown tonight, something exciting. Uh, his LeBlanc has been good. I mean, it's not like he hasn't played Assassins well in the past, and he definitely wants to turn the tables, having been the Zedded victor. He will now be the Zed to his enemy's victor. And victor has to take the exhaust summon a spell. Again, I expect a lot of action around top. Vladimir has, uh, Apple has shown that Vladimir can get to this situation where Maokai's high base damage don't threaten him and just outpush the Maokai. In that situation, I think Samsung's game plan might fall apart a little bit, but Nidalee and Maokai, excellent ganking pressure onto top lane. And not to mention, Samsung sets themselves up with an extremely strong 4-1. Corky Nidalee for Poke and Siege. They've got good disengage. And then, of course, that Zed. Not that IM doesn't have any answers, that Vladimir is going to be useful uh, in terms of split pushing, but definitely more powerful for Samsung. Again, IM looks like they want that big fight uh, in the 5v5, but this time, at least they have the Lucian into the Corky. They're going to have more winning lanes, a little bit more wave clear than they brought, uh, so maybe some better ways to deal with Samsung splitting. But can Vladimir outpush a Maokai early and then be the split push threat against the Zed? That's the question. Can you itemize the Zonias yeah. and also all the other items to be equally relevant? Because it's all about Vladimir and I am to stop Samsung's game plan from happening. That's right. Well, we'll see what Samsung can do against I am in game number two. Apparently, Tucson hates items this game. That's what I, I learned. We saw him play Fizz. He seemed to hate items there with his Devour, <laughs> Trinity Force, Jungle Fizz. But uh, I thought he just hated me by doing that build. Doesn't even have a trinket. Wow. I mean, this is quite unusual. He had places to be, Monte Cristo. He had to get in that brush and stand on a bunch of Italy That's traps. Human. And now they have perfect information that. He's not in any place to skirmish. If Honestly, if I saw that, it would be in time. Yeah, that is very true. I mean, not like the machete is really going to give you a lot of combat statistics in the early game anyway, so I'm not sure how much it matters right there. But Tucson, it does go back, does pick up his trinket finally, and will get his machete. So a little bit of a slip up, but it's not going to cause any long-lasting damage unless they wanted to actually do something early. It's like we have a family member of Luna's in the audience today. Saw their son or their family member do very, very well in the last game. So that extra confidence could only have been helpful. Ignaz on the Alistair this game is something we didn't mention. The Alistair's traded hands. We've already mentioned that Ignaz, a notable Alistair player. Going to have to show something good here if I am can wrestle a game back in this series because 2-0 Samsung, certainly not the result we expected. And they've set themselves up with another good split pushing and pick composition, something they executed absolutely beautifully in the first game of the series. Tucson and Apple just going for a little bit of double jungling right now. And of course, Roar is going to be on that lane bully this time. Not going to have to worry about losing lane as Vayne against Sivir. Both, both.
both top lanes. Just finding a bit of extra experience, not actually vertical jungle in this game. Standard lanes, but uh, quick level two is going to be enacted by both top lanes. Yep, and it's pretty much what we see from every single top these days, whether it's a caster like Vlad or Rumble, or a tank that can solo some of these camps like Kuve can on this Maokai. The last time we saw Apple play Vladimir, he soloed, I believe, the wolf camp as Vladimir with Doran Shield. Now, this time it was a jungle follow, but we've already been surprised once by the Vladimir. Yeah, and just starting with the Tides of Blood, too, that game. Mm. Pretty interesting. I didn't know you could do that, but Apple had a good idea, managed to pull it off. So, goes back into the standard lanes, though. And uh, like you were saying, that's the really interesting conundrum for Apple in this game is he has to be the one to stop Crown Split Push on Zed. But he's also in a lane against the Maokai, and he's going to need Magic Resist. So his timing to stop the split, if he's lucky, maybe he can get a kill and start snowballing, getting the necessary core items that he's going to need to both lane in against Maokai and be a threat against Zed in the split push, but otherwise it's going to be a long time, and Zed's going to hit a power spike and be a major threat, and it'll be whether IM can actually weather that storm. Looks like a little skirmish right there from Eve, but Tucson hops over the wall on his trinket board. Yeah, the, the absolute cheapest possible build that Apple could put out would be, say, Revolver into Spectre's Cal into Zonia's, but we're still talking about a significant gold investment, 1,200 gold, 1,400 gold, and then the three, I think 3.3K, we're still talking about around 6,000 gold to be relevant in the split push. Compare that to Blade the Ruin King and a Brutalizer, especially in mid lane, it should be much easier for Crown to get there. So the timings, as you mentioned, will be the key factor. If Apple can get to that oppressive Vladimir State, he will actually deal with a lot of the different ideas that Samsung have about trying to get a big mid game advantage. But if he can't, it feels like IM's comp might, very similar to last game, fall apart a little bit. Yeah. I, I do have that concern as well. Keeping eyes on this mid lane because Crown at six. Basically, if Nidalee hits a hits a spear, there's going to be a Zed and an Italy who can just get on top of this Victor, and there's literally nothing that Frozen can do about it. Uh, the pounce will come in, the death mark will come in, and he is going to have a very difficult time living through that scenario. Never want to underrate Lee Sin in 2v2 duels, though. So there is a lot of damage potential from both these laners. I have to agree, I expect Victor to try and hold the wave towards his turret, because turret diving at Victor is suddenly much more difficult when he has exhaust, and of course the instant burst damage coming through from the ultimate. And Lee Sin, no, Lee Sin's the first person to visit top. I expected the Maokai nearly to be the call, but do they have enough damage? You don't think so when we're ganking for a Vladimir, but they actually do draw the flash. I'm actually quite surprised that Kuve flashed right there because he had already gotten the twisted advance down and um, just didn't seem that necessary because Apple's Q is still going to be on a relatively long cooldown this early in the game. And what a successful gank. Usually you're talking about a kill in this situation, but to blow the flash and actually clear out the defensive ward with the Raptor buff, suddenly Malphite's going to have to play so much safer and it should mean free farm for Apple in a lane where he's already at least 8 CS ahead. It's nice right there. Eve Looks like he may want to do something. It's a ward right there in the lane from the Lee Sin earlier. And Sapling in the tri brush is going to see the trinket ward go down from Apple. So he's just not going to be able to make a play there anytime soon. Sticking with the same build, not prioritizing the early tier. Maybe Magus into tier will be the build choice coming from Eve, but valuing the higher AP values for theoretically more impactful ganks in the early game. Yeah, I think that is that was really one of the key factors last game to Eve's performance was just that he had those more powerful ganks. Uh, Eve really liked to stack up that tier. He was famous for getting a fully stacked tier by about 18 minutes on that jungle in Italy, so extremely quick. Uh, Tucson wants to make a return here. Eve is nowhere near. Kube already has his ult, though. He's going to walk into it. Evil Plate goes down. Kube going to bounce Tucson off with that arcade smash, but he's going to die in the end. Popped for a first blood from Apple. Very nice play from Tucson. Opens it up first, clearing the ward and getting the flash out, then just sneaking into lane and picking up the kill. Just very smart sense from IM. It opens up pressure on the bottom side. Lucian hadn't shopped crucially. Fury actually took the time to shop. The wave got pushed in, but this opens up the smart window to take Dragon. There's nothing else the IM can do barring some sort of Ignar uh, heroics. Well, Ignar heroics would be 
the flash headbutt to steal the dragon. That would be amazing, Bobby Smithy. And it would also end up with a dead Ignar, 100%. So, not sure that would really be the kind of victory they want this early in the game. Crown going for a Hex Drinker first with this build, so respecting some of the damage that Frozen can deliver. Tucson, a much more successful early game, is going to go to Warrior Enchant. Taking away the blue buff, not really going to hurt the Zed that much, but it's still a nice takeaway. So far this game, I am have followed Samsung's playbook from game one almost identically. Ganking top lane, parlaying that into blue buff contests, and just giving up the first dragon. It's exactly what got I, uh, Samsung their big lead in game one. As you mentioned, taking away the blue buff from Zed, not the biggest factor. In fact, the Nidalee might have even been the one to pick up that second blue just to take advantage of the fact that she'd been going for the AP rather than necessarily the tier, but all in all, not a big factor, but otherwise, mirror starts between games. Yeah, the big, big difference that we have to comment on, though, is that last game, when I am did do this start, they had a big gold lead, more than 400, because they were getting massive CS advantages, particularly in that Riven Rumble lane as well. So they were able to snowball it into more than just kills, right? Uh, they, they just kept Apple down and kept Kuve up the entire time. So it's up to IM to see if they can get this Vladimir. He is, Apple's play on this Vladimir is so important to deal with the Zed in the mid game that it's going to be, they need to do more in this circumstance than they have already. Kuve only down 7 8 CS, not going to be that impactful. So Tucson's going for the Warrior Enchant. Very necessary in this case. Of course, Vladimir ganking for his lane. Doesn't offer very much in terms of damage, especially early, but with the Hemo Plague and, of course, the high base damage from Lee Sin, when you get the Warrior, they do have kill pressure on a Maokai, who just has a couple of Dorans and a Null Magic Mantle. Yeah, Eve completing that Magus enchantment, so he's going to be in a good place in terms of his early game damage outfit. Kuve just happily farming under the tower. He's a level back now. And everyone just patrolling the Dragon Pit from... Samsung on the bottom side. No real gank attempts yet from Eve. Focusing more on counter jungling and warding right now, but this one could be big. Six for Luna, misses the anchor toss. Tucson had already passed smartly to bottom. I see the flash pole miss from Ignar. Eve hasn't shown yet. They have no idea that Eve is there. Now, they should suspect it. They definitely should suspect it. But Eve has great lanes to gank for in every lane. That's why it's surprising that he's had no kill pressure whatsoever on the map. Now going to try around mid. This is what I expected from Frozen. Doesn't want to overextend the flash pole. So the headbutt pole comes in again. Luna gets low, but Raw himself takes by far the worst end of that trade. Well, they walked right into a Foss and then a bomb right there, a rocket. So that's a pretty rough trade to take on both members of your duo lane. VF Sword was completed and now just a little bit of a delay on the recall. Eve still looking for that angle. He wants to take down somebody. Frozen is such a, a juicy target. Hasn't at all path to top lane. That's the surprise to me, Monte Cristo, is that although ganking a, a Vlad can be frustrating, you have the target at CC. He has to pull the, uh, the Twisted Advance if he wants to get through that CC. Then it should be the very easy uh, spear to be able to get some big damage onto Vladimir, who, of course, hasn't itemized any resist, just gone for the pure AP and spell vamp of the world of the ancients, but for now, Eve not concerned in ganking for top. Yeah, they really would rather get some damage down on this bot turret, so Eve been looking for a counter gank in that bottom side and just allowing the duo to keep on pressing forward. Again, that that mid game is gonna be really strong in terms of sieging. And one thing about Eve as a jungler is he likes to show in lane a lot more than most other junglers here in Korea. He is, uh, he reminds me a bit of Svenskeren from SK, where he likes to be in lane, he likes to walk up and help his team auto turrets. You don't really see that that often from junglers. I, it's not that it's not effective, in fact, it can be very effective. I like that kind of style personally. Uh, but it is, it is something that Eve does, which means that having this early power spike with the Corky because of how Eve plays is potent for Siege. You actually see the ultimate used by Noah's going on top of Roar's only just come back into lane, has to use the heal and flash. Man, Roar cannot catch a break this game. Yeah, two summoners used for none. That is huge. Especially if Eve wants to gank right here. There's the headbutt pull. Nice flash from Eve, gets him out. 
Ignar looking just to bully his way through the enemy jungle as he sets down some wards. Now, Crown not going to be such an easy target. Crown hasn't been able to get any solo kill, solo kill pressure onto Frozen with the just the Hex Drinker. He must have a lot of gold saved up at this point. Hasn't been to shop since getting the Hex Drinker about six minutes into the game. Victor just getting his way through the inning phase leads to a potential possibility where you cannot take advantage of the favorable Zed Victor matchup while the laning phase is still going on. You know, we don't know how much longer the laning phase will go. No turrets down just yet. Fury, headbutt Polf. Again, there's the Valk over the top, but there's not really much follow-up. Fury has to flash. Flash from Tucson. Nice delay. And there's the Dragon's Rage into the kill. Roar will snag it at the end. Nice play from Tucson, actually. But a mistake from Fury to be so far up the lane without Luna in lane, without any sort of defensive vision, just caught with his pants down and dies. Isn't able to finish the Trinity Force in his next back like he would have wanted, just picking up the dagger. And look at that timing, too, right as the dragon comes up. So this is a, an opportunity, if they want it, for Tucson and the rest of Incredible Miracle to take that objective. But it looks like they're being indecisive. And now Fury back up. Fury zipping back down into lane. And Eve. Got to get the blue buff and hand it over to Crown, those shurikens. Um, that was a bit of a missed opportunity there from IM. They definitely had a free dragon. It, crucially, they had lane pressure and top and bot as well. It seemed like a freebie uh, in any other semblance of the word, but uh, they don't choose to opt into it. Maybe they just weren't happy with their ward coverage, but it looks definitely sufficient. And the free dragon goes begging. Yeah, very curious. So arm guard now for Frozen and the makings of a black cleaver on the way for Crown as he buys himself a shiny new Cutlass. Fury's still waiting on that Trinity Force power spike. He could only get a dagger right after he died. With a fairly defensive build being gone by the Zed, not actually that much solo kill pressure without any semblance of armor penetration against both uh, the, the Seeker's arm guard and the exhaust, so. Gonna navigate this mid lane fine. Doesn't mean that he won't be a source of damage in team fights, but Frozen isn't able to go the ideal build on Victor. You definitely want to itemize cooldown reduction as early as possible to give yourself the maximum amount of wave clear options. You're naturally gonna be maxing the death ray first. So look, he has to have built for lane, but at least he's navigated what has proved to be a very difficult laning phase. As Crown World as well known, he's lost this laning phase a couple of times in the reverse matchup. And he's down in terms of CS as well. Crown has a healthy lead for 15 minutes in that regard. Apple continues to run amok up here. Now he's getting into that phase where Vladimir has all of that wave clear and can really start pushing in with the Tides of Blood. A bit of poke right there from Crown. But this is a big moment for Samsung. They need to get this bottom tower down. If this bottom tower goes down, Crown can head into the bottom side, and the big, big siege, the 4-1 split starts. It is hanging by a thread. Samsung must kill this bottom turret soon. And the timer is actually probably shorter than we expected, Monty, just because Apple hasn't even felt threatened enough to have to pick up any magic. There's no sign of a Spectre's cow. The spell vamp's been enough to keep him in lane, possibly because of all the early uh, jungle pressure that he felt in the top lane. If he can just itemize into a Zonya, very cleanly will deal with the split push from Zed. So things actually looking very good for IM, despite the fact that this was gonna, always going to be super tenuous in the mid game, depending on where the power actually shook out in the first 20 minutes. Well, Tucson clearing some wards, and there is Samsung. They are starting to line up at this dragon, looking like they want to take it right after Fury picks up the T-Force. So they have the crab control right now. This looks like a good timing, actually. Luna has to flash out of that Tucson. Finding an angle for a possible kick. Luna, a little bit actually over eager on that flash, I feel. He could have definitely survived that and popped his ult if he got ulted himself. So that would have been the end of the world. Kuve forced out. That's going to be a tower as I am. Causes problems at the dragon. Can they answer in the bottom side? Roar is there. Roar may have to use his ult if, in this situation if he doesn't want to lose the turret. So Kuve chose to back. He had mana. He could have just kept wave clearing as his turret slowly got chipped down. The Spear lands. that will be the bottom turret you spoke about. They opted into giving up this turret for a potential TP play around the Dragon. So you have to think that Samsung, with their new power spikes, specifically the Catalyst and the Merc Treads on QV, 
and the Trinity Force completed, are going to look for this second dragon that's actually been very extended. It's been live for at least four or five minutes now. I am has been doing a good job, though, of making sure they don't get hit by a lot of this poke. It's like the dragon's going to get activated as the wave hits the tier one in mid in favor of Samsung. So they have pressure as they juggle a little it a little bit coming out of the pit. Now they're going on to it. I am knows what's going on. I'm going to peek in right here. Are we going to see an old? There is a Lee Sin kick, and there is a steal from Tucson. And Crown not able to do much with that exhaust on him besides Deathmark Ignar for really nothing. It's felt like Samsung didn't really uh, actually go to contest that particular bit. They were happy to walk away. It seemed like Eve and Fury were in different ways. You're going to see the engage. The insect kick comes through under Crown, and he's dead. And that's a TP for Apple as well. Samsung may be looking to re-engage. Kuve's here. Everyone under the turret. Big Hemo Plague onto several members of Samsung. But Fury still has that Trinity Force. He's still just firing those rockets, but it's just not enough damage. They get frozen, but lose even the process. And they're going in again. Tucson a little bit too deep. Roar with the finish off. Uh, however, more rockets. Apple trying to trade with his sustain. And they're going to get the turret. And... Not much more roar out of mana. Still a three for two trade and a dragon is massive for IM. And a turret. And a turret, as you mentioned, the steel. It was notable to me that Fury and Eve seem to be on opposing wavelengths. Fury actually went to DPS down, rocketed the dragon as it was around 1500 health. Eve pounced away, so it was an easy secure for Tucson. Seems like shot calling wasn't really clear around the dragon. Yeah, got to make sure who's going to be finishing that one. Tucson again, another nice insect kick, second of the night to get the kill on the crowd. And continued with the turret dive. So multiple members are going to die. Remember, Maokai's going to have a lot more impact at these early skirmishes than Vladimir. But Apple's so tanky, he's happy to tank the turret. In event, they get Cuve super, super low. There's multiple re-engages from this point. We're just waiting for the second re-engage. Hit the kick onto Luna. Still fairly squishy. It was a one-for-one -one trade. Dragon for support, so that goes for Samsung. But in the end, they get the objective, and that's the crucial factor. Yep. Still, though, still, I am 1.5k gold lead. They haven't been able to do, I feel, enough with the advantages that they've been given. Of course, we do see the split push starting, and there's a needlessly large rod for Apple. Crown's going to get seen by that pink ward and back off. He's got the tools, I, I think, to take out this Vladimir now. Arm penetration, the flat one available. And here's that 4-1, or the, they're actually doing 1-3-1 right now, but it's important that that Corky and Nidalee are together. Window's quite small, though, Monty. With the Nidalee's large rod and the amp time, we're only talking about 1,200 gold till the Zonia's is complete. Yep. At minimum, need to take the turret before that's complete, but even then, Split push is going to be super difficult for Crown. Now, if they keep rotating around the Vladimir, yes. maybe they can make it happen, but... Get the Maokai in that lane. He has the cowl. That seems to be the right move. It's surprising that they've actually put Zed here. I guess it's just to break this outer turret in the top lane. They already have the turret in bottom, but getting standing gold would keep the gold lead much smaller from a Samsung's perspective. Yeah, so Crown wants to push up. It's so hard to push into a Vladimir, though, at this level, because he's capable just of standing in front of the turret, tanking the minion damage himself, and then using the Tides of Blood with his spell vamp to just clear easily without taking any damage. So the pressure then has to be in the middle, and you mentioned Nidalee Corky, Trinity Force procs, and the massive poke means that if a spear hits, you can walk up his cork and get multiple Trinity Force procs down. The War of Attrition in top lane, you're basically just passing free farm over to a Vladimir, which is certainly not ideal for Samsung. They have to move this Zed. This is not good right now. Uh, let the Vladimir push up and then have the Maokai farm at tier two while Zed presses into the bottom side and threatens the tier two himself. It will be much more effective. Letting Frozen just go here. Eve just hasn't been there for the ganks this game. You gotta make a play. Victor can die at any time. He has no flash, and he's against a Maokai. They can easily kill him if Eve goes down to the bottom side. These are just some of the strategic issues that have kind of played Samsung this season. I completely agree with you. There's just no point in passing farm after a Vladimir if you're Zed. It's all one of those scenarios where you're a Caitlyn, and you're pushing wave into, say, a Cogmore or a Vayne to just equalize the CS. If you're trading CS with someone who has a late game advantage over you, you're losing. You're losing, exactly. <laughs> you are losing. 10 CS. 
to Vladimir and 10 CS to Zed are not created equally. <laughs> okay. Alistair in the top side now as they move that wave a little bit beyond the tier one turret, but nobody's really been in the red jungle of Samsung in quite some time. Uh, Eve's farming right now, I'm a, I'm a little bit skeptical of. He's got to start making some more plays like he did in the last one. So to create the split push they want, what Samsung need to do is to have Eve and Luna patrol the red side jungle of LZ. I am. Put down defensive wards and allow Zed to overextend towards that inner turret. He definitely needs the ward coverage. We look down, there's a couple of warding totems. Maokai has one, Nidalee has one. Relieve some pressure from the Zed and ensure that he's split pushing away from the Vladimir, especially now that the Zonyas is complete for Vlad. Okay, well, uh, Zonyas also completed for Apple, so I am may have gotten out of the danger zone here as it were, even as this dragon is about to spawn. It's still going to be hard for them to take a dragon with the poke. As long as Samsung can land some of that, they should be okay. Maokai back in the top side right now. It's weird that they put the Maokai back in the top side for the TP and not because they weren't making any headway in the Zed versus Vladimir matchup. So now, turret's going to go down. No one there to defend it at all. Free tower. And in a game where they have the 1-3-1 one, one advantage, they're losing turrets, Monty. That's a crucial factor. Only 2,500 gold lead, but it's bigger, as you mentioned, with the scalings that we're talking about. I am pick up the turret, just back away to a free dragon. I am should never have been allowed to get into the river. How you play poke comps in that situation is you keep them at bay by controlling the choke points with your poke. And once that team gets into the river, you've already failed. Uh, with Samsung's team composition because they're not bottled up to easily hit skill shots anymore. Exactly, as you mentioned, a choke is a descriptive term. You're moving towards a term where you just cannot dodge the line skill shots of the likes of Nidalee Corky. That's why you get punished when you're moving between those areas. In this case, Samsung, this is what happened against Anarchy. You remember in that game, Zed would split push and then they'd back away to the closest objective or Anarchy, whereas Samsung were kind of all at bay. If you have Zed split pushing in the bottom, Maokai would teleport in top. Zed pushes up a lane, they can back off to the Dragon and pick up an easy objective because they have the lane pressure. With the setup they had, they just traded farm between a Zed and Vladimir. No pressure around the Dragon, and as you mentioned, the Dragon easily goes over to IM. Now, IM, however, is getting the lanes they want, and finally, finally, Papa, Samsung figured it out. So they saw Vladimir in the bottom side clearing out a wave. They immediately start that recall, and Crown goes top while the Maokai is sent to deal with him. But is it too late at this point? I think it might very well be. I mean, Crown isn't even pushing right now. He's going for Krugs. He needs to apply pressure, otherwise there is no point to playing Zed. These little Krug detours are not helpful. And it's not creating enough pressure across the map. I mean, Raw and Frozen can both group in mid and wave clear. So Koki can't even get work done in that situation. Crown has definitely felt the wrath of two different Zeds in recent weeks, but his own Zed play and Samsung's play around that pick leaves a lot to be desired. Well, it's just compare him. He just played against Mickey when they won a game because Mickey was killing inhibitor turrets yep. with the Zed in the split push. And Crown seems not to know how to play this really at all. Uh, or at least the team, whoever is shot calling, is not assigning him to the right lanes. And now he has to deal with Victor as well. Easy wave clear, no chance of an all-in while Victor has that Zonia's under the turret. Very, very bad situation. I am has every advantage. And Fury's on this Corky. We've seen his Corky highly prioritized in the first round of picks in multiple games, and they've lost all of them. I don't get this Corky for Fury. He's such a strong individual player. Give him something that he can make the plays with. I love seeing Fury's Lucian. And it's not just the Corky, it's first pick Corky. What what exactly is the priority on this Corky? Because it doesn't seem to work for Samsung at all. You can maybe understand from a player like Prey is that actually that flash kick comes through. Luna is closer to his own team though and is able to back away. So this time Tucson's insect play doesn't lead to anything. Corky's great on teams like SK Telecom or the, Koo Koo, or the Koo Tigers, where when you hit an item power spike, they know how to take advantage of that. Samsung just looks clueless with the Corky in their hands. And now Crown going to get exhausted. He's going to have to flash. I mean, it's just Alistair and Lee Sin who are there, but that's enough with Frozen and Roar. 
walking into the top side to make him a bit nervous. Now they have an angle onto the tower. They have the Nidalee and the Corky there. Maybe a nice trade, but the rest of IM, it's like they're gonna get there in time. They might have actually had to think about tanking that tower. Teleport's being used. We know that Luna doesn't have teleport, but the teleport's cancel. Yeah, cancel on the port. Dredge line does get Luna to safety. He was not interrupted right there. Kube wants to go into Apple. Apple very, very vulnerable. And he's gonna go down after using that Hemo play. Maybe eventually, Zonia's Hourglass for now. Tucson's gonna get into the back lines. Chaos Storm on top of everyone, but Crown may be on cleanup duty. He's got the death mark. Samsung, Samsung can and should have pursued that. Crown, interestingly, with death mark available, did not go aggressive. He didn't have flash, but to not use the W Shadow aggressively, the Living Shadow, and go for a pick at all. I mean, hmm. all the ults were down for literally all of them for I am. There was such a small amount of threat for that Zed in that situation. Yeah, sure, the ult's been changed. You can't get out immediately anymore, but he had follow-up from his team there. Kube was there. He was relatively healthy. I think that's a bit of a misplay. Samsung, it was a good pick. I mean, Apple was too far forward. He paid for it. But at the same time, you can take more if you're Samsung in that situation. Well, Samsung literally lost Monty. Look at the wards that in that invade, I am able to put down. They have excellent war control around the dragon, which spawns in a minute, where Samsung get a pick, get a free shot potentially, but can't really move up the vision or really push into an area that plays towards their win conditions. Yeah, that's very true. And I mean, the best they did was shove a wave into the top lane turret. They couldn't take mid even, so. Oh, not good for Samsung. They they can try and go for this dragon. They pretty much have to get it at this stage or see if they can trade two turrets where if they can get mid and top, it might be okay. But anything less than that, and this is not going to end well for them in terms of objectives. I feel like the good Zed teams and the bad Zed teams, you can just look at the mini-map and know which one is. And that's not to do with where Zed is, it's where the vision is and how yeah. it moves with the Zed. As the Zed moves up a lane, so does the vision. All the vision around Zed is actually IM vision. He has no defensive vision. It's so much harder for him to overextend. In this case, okay, he sees five members, but that's because he's going to be giving up a dragon for this outer turret. And Tucson goes in right there. He overextends and it just explodes. The burst damage so high from Corky and Nidalee that that is... Bad idea, Tucson trying to make the play. Crown now gets the tower in the top side. They're gonna go after two. Holding IM there for as long as they can while still threatening that dragon. And Crown may get two towers and a dragon right now. Samsung really turning this around. And Crown activates the Yomu, so actually has a lot of turret damage with that itemization. We didn't see a Brutalizer at all in the early game, but picks up a straight Yomu. Two turrets and they should be able to back off the dragon as well. It's a massive strategic win. Samsung. Holy cow, two towers and a dragon now in a very strange turnaround as Tucson just <laughs> throws himself to his own doom, basically. I'm not really sure. He was trying to get a fancy insect off. He's had some good ones, but you can't be that reckless. Otherwise, good teams uh, will punish you. An acute case of the Lee sin -itis. <laughs> I think it's Lee, Lee Syndrome, Syndrome as well. Jeez. That's true. Who would use Lee Sinitis when Lee Syndrome is there? I'm just the worst. <laughs> we discussed that earlier. And honestly, Lee Syndrome against a Nautilus who has so many ways to CC you. you know, all he needs is that one auto attack and that one second against the burst of Samsung will be enough to take that victory. You know, one thing that we didn't talk about uh, is that Crown is running Sweeper instead of a Warding Totem. He's not even helping himself in this split push. When we, when we look at guys like Mickey, they run upgraded Warding Totems on Zed because it doesn't really matter if you clear the wards. It doesn't matter if they have wards. The only thing that matters is if you know there's another one or two people coming. And the mindshare on Assassins, and specifically split pushing Assassins like Zed, has changed, as you mentioned. There was a time when Sweeper was very common. You'd sweep a brush, stand in it, and then look for the pick. It's just so much more regular to split push. It's much more advantageous both this game and with the kit the Zed has to pick up the warding totem to give yourself that defensive vision, like you say. Yeah, the, the standing in a ward is, or standing in a brush is basically hoping 
that the enemy is going to make a mistake and reactive. walk into it. It's reactive play. Whereas if you have the wards, you're constantly forcing the enemy to react to you or they lose towers. And that's just a more consistent and powerful way to play in almost all circumstances. Yeah, sometimes you get that miracle pick that leads to a Baron and a fast closeout win, but it's just not a high percentage play. Jusen gets caught once again, chunked out to half health. Getting a bit cute with his positioning on Lee Sin. Still has the flash available, so in his head might be looking free. In fact, he actually used the kick, but just with no result. Well, wow, Tucson really started this game strong, but as it continues, he's looking more and more desperate. And he, you know what? He doesn't have to be. Just let Ignar lead the charge with the engage with his combo and then follow up with a Chaos Storm and the Hemoplague. The damage from IM is huge. They have a damage amp in the Hemoplague and then so much from Victor. Their itemization is also coming along. Corky actually flash pulse comes through from Ignar. Corky's very low, dies instantly. This looks like a good fight for Aya. Yeah, there's the colleague as well. Luna not going to catch the tail end of it. There's a death mark on Aurora. Roar will die in the end, but will crowd pay for it as well? Exhaust already onto him. He's on a bit of a run right now. Can he go over the wall? Yes, he can. Ignite ticks down, and that was a bit of a waste of a hemo plague there from Apple, actually. Kuve still in the bottom lane. Kuve not TPing into that engagement. Instead, prioritizing the turret. Two for one. Samsung stays in. Now, can they do the Baron? Now, it's a big risk. Look at the level I disadvantage. Eve is level 16 to the level 14 of Tucson. Teleport will come in after a fresh shot. Baron's at 5,000 health. This is looking bad for IM. It certainly is. Ignar very low. There's the twisted advance. Kuve gets kicked off, but that's not going to be quite enough, I think. It's like at least the Baron's going to be stopped. No more damage. Sphere misses. And they take away the blue buff at least. I am maybe sticking around a little bit too long here with low health bars. You know what? Oh, oh. nice blue spear. Eve takes it. This could actually set up a counter Baron. They Doing that blue buff. Oh my, Samsung's going to go for it. And yeah, Lee coming back. We already mentioned the two-level advantage for Eve. I think Samsung had a chance. This crown wow. won't get there, though. Well, Roar's not there either. Neither is Ignar. So they've got some time. The Apple taking a lot of poke damage right now. So is Eve taking damage from the Baron. Luna on the outside. Fury's going to get found by Roar. But they've got Vision in the brush. Apple knocked around by the Arcade Smash. Luna in the back line. Crown coming through. Crown with a kill onto Roar. And this is going to be Samsung to clean up. They got the skirmish they wanted. And they got the poke double kill for Crown. Their front line is so strong, Monty. Cuve on this Maokai was doing so much work tanking in the front line. Even though Eve had to disengage over the back of the Baron wall, the tank stood in the front. Fury was free DPSing, and they pick up the Baron. I mean, right there, that blue buff contest from IM was really just sealed their fate. They weren't paying paying respects to the fact that Samsung was coming up with these timers. They were going to be walking over to the Baron with full HP bars. Instead, they got poked about a million times by Nidalee and Corky, and then this is the result. But Luna in the front line with Juve are so tanky, and they're able to free DPS. Raw gets into the back line, finally makes the dead pick work, justifies the pick as he gets the assassination on the only target left. There's double Zonyas on this team, you'll remember. Able to just fight around and kill Apple from there. Good team fighting from both Crown and Samsung Galaxy. And this is where the split push really shines, obviously. The problem when you run Zed is that he's just not as good in those 5v5 fights. And to get the Baron, you frequently have to win one. Uh, and, but when you get that Baron buff, holy cow, are you potent. He's right up there with Lich Bane, Twisted Fate. Maybe less safe, of course, without the ranged auto attack, but itemizing into attack speed and AD makes him a turret destroyer with the Baron buff minion wave, as you mentioned. He hasn't actually committed to going into the bottom lane just yet, maybe looking for a sly pick, but finally we'll start the split push in bottom. Man, I can't believe I am. I mean, the Baron call itself wasn't that bad, but not respecting the, the death timers on the enemy and trying to fight so much around that blue buff was a big error, but Samsung played it cool. They kept poking and they got what they wanted in the end. Eve's poke is hurting a lot, despite the fact that he spent 3,000 gold or so on the Banshee Veil. Shows you that the base values on that Nidalee are very high. There's no QSS being completed by Roar. How do you peel away this Zed? They've got one target for the death mark, and it's Roar. That seems to be enough. I really don't think Roar needs that BF sword right now. I mean, the Bloodthirster sure will help, but that's going to be torn through by the poke. 
And then he's still a very nice target for the Zed in the end. Tucson basically has to be on kick away Zed, Judy. That's the, really the most he can do in a fight. Engage is certainly not something that he should be doing, despite the fact that he spent this whole game trying to put together a highlight reel of insect kicks. Needs to be defensive until, at minimum, the Q QSS is completed by Raw. Crown recalling, actually, after pushing up that wave. Samsung taking their foot off the gas a little bit. They have to clear up the side wave and top, but this play, a little bit, a little bit conservative for a team that just got a Baron. Now, they also picked up a massive gold lead as a result of all those kills. Yeah, almost 10,000 gold, say about eight and a bit thousand. Banshee Veil is actually the pickup from Crown. You do not often see Zeds itemizing into quite as defensive an option as Banshee. In this situation, until the QSS is completed, doesn't affect his one-shot potential onto Raw just yet. No, and usually, of course, you see a GA. It does give you that MR, but a little bit more cleanup potential if you do happen to go down in a fight. That is, the Veil, I, I don't... I'm not really getting it. So the, what, really it, what, what it, it shouts to me though, Monty, only ways to deal with him for I am right now getting on top of Raw is displacement. It's either the headbutt from Alistair or it's the kick from Lee Sin. You're negating one of those with the spell shield. Maybe that's enough to get that reliable kill onto Raw. And if he's counseling out Raw each fight, Samsung should be winning. Yeah, well, Raw is just a long way away from that QSS to help survive the death mark. Baron. Falling off of Samsung right now as they a couple awkward double pink wards in a brush. They're trying to control this top side. They created a slow push in top, so they will have minion wave pressure eventually for a three-lane push. Eve did go back and complete his Luden's Echo. That'll be nice. That'll be actually very helpful. We saw Chaser itemizing the Luden's Echo early just for the massive poke damage and, of course, the little AOE that it provides when you hit a spear. Now, my question to you, do you still have Crown split pushing in the bottom lane when there's multiple people? In fact, now they've rotated Apple with both Zonyas and TP to deal with it. No, you push up in top lane right now where you have warded and you do this. You move Crown to mid and take out the tier two with him. You don't try and push into an inhibitor turret right now. Uh, you just want to cut off the jungle and collapse on. If Tuzan does something like that, if Crown was already there, he would be dead. So. When you have the vision control on the top side, you want to move in, in that pattern. Otherwise, you have some more issues. Uh, and you can't punish people for, for walking through there for free. And you really can't split push an inhibitor tower. We just don't see that uh, in the last six months or so of League of Legends. It's become so much harder to break the base on these split push duties. So, as you mentioned, uh, we see. Oh, they're Righteous going glory. in. TP activated. Apple's going to get there. They're going to try and collapse onto a flank. Culling really not going to do a whole lot. They are so scared of the Zed in their back line as well. They should be great positioning from Samsung so far. And there is Kuve just locking up a choke point with that Arcane Smash. And now the poke continues to rein in. IM has to walk around, but Kuve's there. Fury going to flash forward. Tucson is just CC'd in the back line. And the Luden's Prox continue to come in onto IM. Frozen finds himself just CC'd as Crown looks to clean up. He will have to back off crit onto him from Roar. Oh, they're gonna come back in on him. Where is, what is Roar doing? I don't know. That is really dangerous to try and push up the wave. He's gonna go onto Luna. Oh, actually takes the kill right there as is gonna come in with the TP. Crown, maybe not wanting to fight this, but Eve has enough damage alongside Kuve that that's gonna be the ace. Roar, I think, got a little bit too big for his britches. He saw the low health bars and thought about the triple kill 1v3. Wasn't possible. It's a lot of attack speed and NAD on this team. Tucson's still 10 seconds away. Alston can buy a little bit of time, but realistically, this should be an inhibitor for Samsung Galaxy. Yeah, it should be. I mean, the timing couldn't be better, Papa Smithy. Look at that. The Baron coming up in 30 seconds. Dragon coming up in a minute 20. You can just see the objectives lining up like dominoes for Samsung. Eve does aggro the red. I think maybe shopping would be the smarter, but look at the damage. It instantly deletes the red buff. My apologies on that one. <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen either. Wow. Well, he is level 18. True. So that helps. Tucson, only 16 still. He's had that two level disadvantage. And Eve 
You know, we, we did criticize his lack of presence in the early game, but that entire time he was farming, he has 200 plus CS as a jungler. That is a massive number, so 70 lot. above his opposite number. And Tucson ran the first 10, 15 minutes of this game, then just the over-aggression has been caught out multiple times and coincided with Samsung Galaxy really taking the ascendancy this game. Yeah, this is going to be a tough objective to stop for IM. I mean, if it goes well, maybe they can take a dragon right here and try and trade it for the Baron, but that's about the most they could hope for. Just the burst onto the back line, and it's difficult to itemize against because, yeah, Frozen has his Zonias, but he has no MR to deal with Eve, who is a huge assassination threat at this point. Actually went back and finished the death cap. Now oh we're talking my. about a massive stack of AP. Don't have the exact number. I'm guessing over 600, given the fact that he has two needlessly large rod items. They are managing to hold off the pressure, though, because the super minions pushing out in mid lane. What does Samsung want to do? Seems like they want to fight. Well, Samsung just wants to poke, I think. Yep, that is a lot of damage for a jungler. And there we go. Apple is the first target. Has to pool to start off the fight. Luna going to get low, but he's not going to die to the Chaos Storm. But Kube finds himself hunted into the back line. Kube still gets the kill on to Victor. And Apple starting to turn this one around, but everyone's so low. The poke oh. just destroys Roar. And as well as Apple's doing in the sustain, the poke is too much. Double for Fury. And then Tucson on the run right there. Eve gonna. Oh, oh, uh, ah, oh. oh. The Akity Sacks going on the back line. He's gonna try again. <laughs> this, is, this is great. He sees Eve with that ward, so there's no way he's gonna get hit. But he's quite happy to just delay Lee Sin from getting back with the long death <laughs> time. Gets go. it with the pounce. <laughs> and Samsung Galaxy Monte Cristo defying all, I believe, analyst expectations with a comfortable 2-0. All two analysts on this cast did not think this was going to happen tonight, but Samsung delivers. They bounce back with their poke, and that's going to be GG. Clean, clean 2-0 for Samsung, especially that first game was really well played by them. I was impressed by Eve on Nidalee. Two games, two big wins. This game in particular, Team Fight Nidalee is such a Difficult. Difficult skill to pull off. Chaser did wonderful things in the series earlier this week, and now Eve smartly darting in our team fights, basically one-shotting Frozen, who had to Zonia's, then just had 100 health after it. Very smart play from Samsung. Okay, in the early game, they suffered. Tucson looked really great, but then the Lee Syndrome, I've, le I've learned it now. I've consulted my DSM for this game. Lee Syndrome holding him down, and comfortable win for Samsung. Yeah, well... It looked rough there for a while for Samsung. It looked like they, they may not have been able to take that 